When it comes to buying a new phone, design has always been one of the key deciding factors. Some like their phone to be able to flip, some like their phone to look really really elegant while others are okay with a rugged form factor. And for Vivo's most affordable model in their V20 lineup, this phone offers a slim and lightweight body without compromising performance. Hey guys, Kevin here, you're with the Modern Creatures and for this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the Vivo V20 SE. But again, if you enjoy our videos, please consider subscribing to our channel because we have more of these lined up. Since Vivo is proud of its design, let's get straight to it. Although not the slimmest we've seen on a smartphone, the V20 SE is indeed thin at 7.83mm. It sits well in the hand and has an impressively balanced weight distribution. Its back panel makes things interesting. Although it mainly has this light blue color, having a light source hit the surface reveals a yellow glow. This positively breaks the all blue color of its back cover making it stylish and pleasant to look at. Additionally, since the panel is made of polymer, it becomes really smooth to the touch. This can both be a good and a bad thing, since though it feels good in the hands, it's also a bit prone to slipping out of your hand. You can of course choose to put the included jelly case on, but then again it'll become thicker and you'll kinda miss the entire point of its sleek design. Moving on, the chassis feels really solid and exudes a premium vibe. The volume rocker is at the right side, lined up along the power and lock button, while the left is devoid of anything since the dual SIM tray with microSD slot is situated up top. Meanwhile, the 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C port, and speaker grille are all found at the bottom. On the upper left corner resides the camera tray consisting of three lenses. The V20 SE carries a 48MP main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for achieving bokeh or blur for portrait shots. On the flip side, a front facing camera is housed inside this water drop notch in the middle. It carries a 32 megapixel lens accompanied by essential selfie tools. The V20 SE is available in oxygen blue and gravity black. Obviously, what we have here is the former. Up front, it sports a 6.44-inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 2400 by 1080. Having said that, the AMOLED screen has really deep blacks that's simply not achievable with IPS displays. It's got a 20 to 9 aspect ratio, so it's friendly for landscape usage when gaming or watching videos. We were streaming this video as part of our battery test and it almost seemed like we had a small aquarium set up with its vibrant images and bright display. The phone sports a 60Hz refresh rate for its screen, meaning icons and transitions produce smoother movement when browsing, scrolling, or playing supported games. The V20 SE also employs an under-display fingerprint sensor and not the usual scanner seen on the side of the phone together with the power button. Watching videos as mentioned earlier is really enjoyable and can be lifelike. The bezels are thin enough to make content consumption a bit more immersive. It still has this lone speaker grill at the bottom, so there's no balance in audio when you're watching in landscape orientation. But use its included earphones and you're good to go. Having a triple camera setup means you have varying shooting tools depending on your subject. On top of the main, ultra-wide and depth sensors, it also has a super macro mode for close-up shots. Different shooting modes come standard like pro mode, slow motion up to 240fps at 720p, and time-lapse. Plus, you can also shoot up to 4K videos with it. Its main sensor produces really sharp photos with close to accurate colors. Dynamic range is good and together with its HDR feature, produce defined images. Wide-angle shots also look great but are a bit prone to digital noise, while its depth sensor produced neat cutouts with a few hit and miss for the subject's hair, for example. Use its night mode and you won't be disappointed. I was able to shoot these shots with very little light and images still came out decent. In fact, there's minimal noise or artifacts even if you look closely. Here are more sample shots. 
inside an Octocore Snapdragon 665 runs the show. This chipset promises a more efficient performance as well as smarter features like AI, responsible for 3D face unlock, object detection for its cameras, among others. It's accompanied by 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. This means it should be able to handle multitasking and has room for quite a number of files. Although if you demand more space, you can always go for an additional microSD card. Everyday usage on the V20 SE was a smooth experience. With its Android 11 OS, navigation through its mostly flat UI is simple and straightforward. It also has an app drawer so you can keep your home screen neat and tidy. Gaming on this phone is also a delight since it supports up to 60Hz refresh rate, movement is smoother especially for fast-paced games. We run popular titles like Call of Duty Mobile, Mobile Legends, and even Genshin Impact, and we were definitely happy with its performance. Although there were times when we experienced slight lags specifically for Genshin Impact, it didn't really affect gameplay. Other features like fingerprint scanning and facial recognition also proved to be fast and reliable. For its face unlock, it still recognizes you even if you're wearing a face mask with the cap on, as long as you keep your eyes visible. Wear shades and you'll need to go for the fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone. The battery department is handled by a 4100 mAh pack and supports fast charging. With social media browsing, moderate to heavy online gaming and no battery saving features on, a full charge might not make it for a whole day's usage. We usually found ourselves needing to charge around dinner time, which is still not bad. Plus, it has built-in power management tools if you need to lengthen its battery life. As part of our usual battery test that involves streaming a full HD video, the V20 SE was able to last almost 12 hours of continuous playback. In terms of charging, it takes about 52 minutes to top up the device thanks to its 33-watt flash charge feature. Meanwhile, 30 minutes of charging yielded us 63% from zero. And as always in our reviews, The Modern Creatures aims to find special features and devices that make them worth having, things that would give them an edge from their peers. For the Vivo V20 SE, it would have to be its Snapdragon CPU that makes it possible to enjoy a fluid UI, capable cameras, smooth gaming sessions, and more. At 15,999 pesos, it's this quality of performance that makes the V20 SE a must-have on your list if you're looking for a really capable mid-range device without having to reach the 20,000 peso mark. And that's about it for our Vivo V20 SE review. Tell us, what did you like best about this smartphone? The cameras? The 60Hz refresh rate? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, visit our website and follow us on our social media pages for more news, features, and reviews. Once again, that's it for me. I'm Kevin. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.